This is the Ender 3 Pro, probably one of the most popular 3D printers in the hobbyist community, and also probably one of the most tuned ones. You could call it the Honda Civic of the tuning community. So, by coincidence, today we're gonna upgrade to the X-axis on this printer with linear rails, and in later videos, the Y-axis as well. So, without further delay, let's get to building. We're gonna try to do this upgrade as easy as possible. So we're gonna use the original metal carriage that the Ender came with without having to print a plastic one. We're gonna print some extensions for the limit switch and we will have to print a plastic adapter for the belt. Let's begin by removing the hot end assembly currently installed on the printer's gantry. This may be the original equipment that came with your Ender 3 or you may have something modified. As you can see, I'm using a direct drive conversion kit from Mello to which I will leave a link in the description if anyone is interested in acquiring it. There is also an upgrade video that you can see if you so choose. Removing everything should be relatively straightforward. Once the X gantry is empty, loosen the tensioner screws and remove the belt. We now have to remove the roller bearings from the gantry plate as shown. We should next remove the casing slash X axis motor assembly. Please note that the limit switch for the x-axis is located inside this razor. We must remove it because we will have to install a spacer which will allow us to compensate for the extra depth of the linear rail. Next, we should install the motor assembly, but we cannot use the same stock M3 bolts that we removed as they are too short. We will need to source 4 M3 flat head screws that are 50mm in length. I also suggest that you use some Loctite here as to prevent anything coming loose due to the printing vibrations. We begin by inserting the bolts into the plastic casing with the spacer placed at the end as shown. I also apply a little Loctite at the tip of the bolt. We can now position the motor and the plastic extruder as shown and begin tightening the bolts. As you can see, we have moved the limit switched outwards, compensating for the thickness of the linear rail. Now the X gantry plate will hit and activate the limit switch as designed. In all likelihood, the rails that you acquired came soaked in some oil, and I would strongly recommend that this is cleaned off and that you properly lubricate the bearings. I filled the tub with some IPA alcohol and took apart the linear rail block piece by piece. I also let the components soak overnight, dried them, and reassembled. Finally, I lubricated the bearings with what I had handy, which was some white lithium grease. I will leave a link to a video that better describes this process and what types of lubes should be used for the bearings. It's time to prep the linear rail by using M3 bolts with T-nuts for the 2020 extrusion. I have used every other hole on the linear rail for mounting. You can use all the mounting holes if you so wish, but I do not believe it's necessary. It is now time to slide the rail into the aluminium profile. The process is fiddly, but with some patience, you will have this task completed without major issues. Please make sure to leave some slack in the T-nuts so that you have room to maneuver. You will have to determine how far you want to push the rail so that the limit switch is activated by the X gantry plate before the rail cart reaches the edge of the rail. Once that has been determined, we can center the rail to the profile using some alignment jigs, which you can print prior to assembly. Link in the description. It is now time to tighten the rail to the profile. As you can see, I'm starting at one end followed by the opposite end. Repeat this process for the remaining bolts while also moving the cart along the rail to make sure that it's free to move without obstruction. Once all the installed bolts are tightened, remove the alignment jigs and move to the next steps. We will now have to drill four holes in the X gantry plate using the plastic template printed beforehand. Position the guide the way shown and begin drilling the four holes. You can apply some cutting oil to protect your drilling bits if you have some handy. Moving on, we will attach the belt extender to the gantry plate with the orientation shown. Use four M3 bolts to mount the gantry plate to the linear rail block. While tightening, 
make sure to have it as perpendicular as possible to the x-axis profile. It may happen that if you tighten these bolts too much, it could impede the movement of the block along the rail. If this is the case, loosen the bolts slightly until the gantry moves very smoothly along the rail. I would recommend using some Loctite here as well to prevent vibrations of the printer loosening these bolts in the future. Finally, use an M4 bolt and nut to secure the belt extender to the gantry. Once done, check the clearance of the adapter to the aluminium profile. If there is no space, as shown, the plastic is grinding along the profile. You will need to remove it and sand it down until there is no restriction in movement. At this point, we should check that the limit switch and gantry plate are well positioned and aligned with one another. Once everything is lined up, we can reattach the belt tensioner followed by the installation of the belt. For this step, it is actually easier to remove the extender and insert the belt tips in the designated slots. Now, we can attach the extender to the carriage and tighten the bolt and nut. For the belt tightening process, we can use a flathead screwdriver to maintain tension on the belt while screwing the bolts in place with the other hand. We are pretty much done with the linear rail assembly. In my case, I took this opportunity to do some cable management with some spiral wrap and finally installed the Mellow Direct Drive system to the carriage. And this process varies depending on the setup you previously had on the printer. That's it, at least for the mechanical side of the installation. You will have to recalculate your probe offsets as well as change the software positioning parameters as the nozzle has moved forward following this conversion. The process varies depending on the software you are running, such as Clipper or Marlin, and I advise you to check the documentation if you are not familiar with the configuration changes. I will leave some helpful links in the description to point you in the right direction. So what is this conversion good for? The rail should increase rigidity of the x-axis, it should provide better repeatability in prints, and require less adjustment compared to the V-roller counterparts. The emphasis is on the word should, because in reality, with the plethora of cheap linear rails available, you may be on the receiving end of a bad or inaccurate linear rail. Therefore, you should be careful from where you source them, and even that could be a hit or miss. Overall, I think this is a nice upgrade, but in my opinion, one of the last ones you should do for your 3D printer. Improvements in mainboard, stepper drivers, leveling probes, Z-axis stabilizers and extruder assemblies should, in my opinion, have a higher priority than linear rails upgrade. That being said, it is not very difficult to perform, and also, these days, not very expensive. That's about it for this video, thank you for watching, and see you on the next project.